Sudan's military led foreign ministry has declared the country has suspended its membership in the region about the IGAD ahead of discussions on the nine month Sudan conflict. This decision comes after IGAD extended an invitation to Rapid Support Forces Commander Mohamed Hamdan Daglo, also known as Hamiti, to join the meeting in Uganda alongside Sudan's Army Chief Abul Fattah al Burhani and regional leaders. Nabil Biajo gets an analysis of the move from Sudan expert Suleiman Baldo, director of the policy group Sudan Transparency and Policy Tracker. It is an indication of the confusion and lack of strategic direction in Sudan's current uh, uh, foreign policy. Because the, the letter to the IGAD suspending Sudan's membership in the organization came from the foreign ministry. While a statement issued a day earlier by the Sovereign Council headed by Burhan used a softer language that conveyed some leeway uh, for Burhan to meet with uh, Hemeti, uh, according to the invitation by IGAD. This tells me the direction of the political affairs of Sudan is coming from the foreign ministry. It is important to note that since the coup d'etat actually of 21st October 2021, there is no, you know, the de facto situation, there is no government in Sudan. And that since the war of April 15, there is total absence of state institutions, except for the foreign ministry which is seen by the Sudanese to represent the views, positions and policies of the Islamist movement uh, behind uh, driving you know, this war and using the army to achieve its objective of returning to power. Uh, and therefore, you know, uh, the letter to the IGAD means that this uh, power behind the throne is not interested in a political negotiated solution, but want to fight to the very end to achieve its political end of returning to power. And in doing so, it is only isolating Sudan from the region and from all other possible and potential mediators, as has happened in the past also. Sudan has, just like you just mentioned, has isolated itself from the region, the mediation efforts in the region. Uh, what does that mean for peace efforts in general and, uh, and peace diplomacy to resolve uh, this crisis, this nine-month-long nine conflict? Well, Sudan has cornered itself now. Rather, the, the Islamists in the foreign ministry has, have cornered Sudan in a situation whereby they have already rejected the African Union as a mediator, have failed to cooperate with the Jeddah platform, with the U.S. and Kingdom of Saudi Arabia as you know, facilitators to the point of leading them to suspend, adjourn these talks indefinitely because of the failure of getting you know, a simple ceasefire uh, from the two parties. And, and now the EGAD. They're shutting the access to the IGAD by this letter. And therefore, this reduces the chances of a negotiated settlement, simply. And it makes uh, Hemeti, Mohammed Hamdan Dagalo, the leader of the Rapid Support Forces, look better in comparison because at least in rhetoric, he's saying he's committed to peace, to a negotiated settlement, to a meeting with Burhan, with IGAD leaders. He's increasingly taking central stage while Burhan is increasingly isolating himself and appearing as, as the obstacle towards uh, some negotiations to achieve peace. Uh, wh- what do you think about that? Indeed, Bora MIT is making all the right moves at the diplomatic level, uh, engaging in, 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 in conversations with the UN Secretary General, his personal envoy to Sudan, to with the EGATS, uh, you know, several member states by traveling to these member states, meeting their presidents and head of government in Ethiopia. So he's, he's trying to gain international diplomatic uh, legitimacy. However, this international diplomatic legitimacy cannot compensate the fact that the rapid support forces have zero legitimacy in the eyes of the Sudanese people because of the conduct of their soldiers on the ground, which has been systematically abusive of the population wherever the rapid support forces have come to, you know, have uh, the upper hand militarily in any particular area, and they, they now occupy more than half of the Sudan. Both parties have issues of legitimacy. 
Doomsday Cult leader Paul McKenzie and 30 of his followers were presented in a Kenyan court in the coastal town of Malindi on Wednesday to face charges of murdering 191 children. McKenzie and the other suspects did not enter pleas because High Court Judge Mugule Thunde granted a request from prosecutors that they undergo mental assessment and return to court on February 6th. The remains of 180 of the 191 dead children have not been identified according to the prosecution's charge sheet. Mackenzie and some of his followers have been blamed for the death of 429 members of his Good News International Church, many of whom are believed to have starved themselves in the belief that by doing so, they would meet Jesus Christ before the world ends. The bodies were discovered in dozens of shallow graves on a hundred on eight hundred acre, three hundred twenty hectare ranch in the remote area known as Shakahora Forest in the coastal country of Kilifi. The graves were found after police rescued 15 emaciated church members who told investigators that Mackenzie had instructed them to fast to death before the world ends. Four of the 15 died after they were taken to a hospital. Autopsies on some of the bodies found in the graves showed they died from starvation, strangulation or suffocation. Kenya's prosecutor said on Monday that 95 people will be charged with murder, cruelty, child torture, and other crimes. For months since the arrest of the defendant last April, prosecutors have asked a court in Cliffy for permission to keep holding them while the investigation continues. But last week, Principal Magistrate Yosufu Shikanda declined their latest request to hold the suspect for an additional 60 days, saying the prosecutors had been given enough time to complete the investigation. Mackenzie is serving a separate one-year prison sentence after being found guilty of operating a film studio and producing movies for his preaching without a valid license. Mackenzie allegedly encouraged church members to move to Shakahora Forest to prepare for the end of the world. A Senate committee report said Mackenzie chose the area due to its remoteness. Once inside the villages established by Mackenzie, followers were not allowed to leave the area nor interact within themselves, the report said. The followers were required to destroy vital documents, among them national identity cards, birth certificates, certificates of the title of property, academic certificates, marriage certificates, creating problems in identifying the dead, the report said. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe.